and welcome back again to another episode of Doodling Through Education. We are already in week 15 for my classical conversation students. And today we have a science episode. Today we're going to talk about energy. We're going to talk about the two forms of energy, how they are the same, how they relate to each other, and what they are. So let's go ahead and start doodling. The first thing that is important to define is the word energy. Energy is the capacity to do work. The first form of energy that we will be discussing is kinetic energy. This is defined as the energy that an object has due to its motion. If we want to move an object, let's say a toy, we must apply a force. This requires work and the energy from that work is then transferred to the toy. There are several types of kinetic energy. First, there is radiant energy, which is always in motion, like ultraviolet light. Then there is thermal energy, which is generated due to the motion of atoms. Remember, atoms are what makes up something. So this is generated due to the motion of atoms when they collide with each other. And again, that's thermal energy. An example of thermal energy are hot springs. The next type of kinetic energy is sound energy. So the vibration of an object is what produces this sound energy. An example of this is drums or the string of an instrument like a guitar or a violin. And then that brings us to electrical energy, which is obtained from free electrons that are positively and negatively charged. And we talked a little bit about positive and negative charges last week. Examples of electrical energy are batteries and lightning. And then last is mechanical energy. This is the sum, so the total of kinetic energy and potential energy. And we will talk about potential energy in a minute. So this is known as mechanical energy. It's the sum of the kinetic and potential energy. We measure energy in joules. The equation to determine how much kinetic energy something has is one half m times v squared, where m equals mass and v equals the object's velocity. So what would have more kinetic energy? Would a truck traveling down the road or a car going down the road at the same speed have more kinetic energy? Hmm. The answer to this question is the truck because it has a greater mass. And for my kiddos that understand the equation one half mv squared, then you will know that if it has a greater mass, then it's going to have a greater kinetic energy. Now, let's move on to the next form of energy. And remember, I said it is potential energy. An object can store energy as the result of its position. This stored energy of position is referred to as potential energy. Essentially, potential energy is the stored energy of position possessed by an object. An example of this is a rock in a slingshot. As it is being pulled back, it has a lot of potential energy. The further it is pulled back, the more potential energy it has. As it is let go, that potential energy is transferred to kinetic energy as it flies through the air. 
This specific example is what is called elastic potential energy. This is the energy stored in elastic materials as the result of their stretching or compressing. Elastic potential energy can be stored in things like rubber bands, bungee cords, trampolines, springs, an arrow drawn into a bow, etc. I often think about David and Goliath in this example. If David had a traditional slingshot, as he put the rock in the slingshot and pulled it back, that is what is called potential energy. And as he lets it go, then it will be transferred to kinetic energy. The other type of potential energy is called gravitational potential energy. So when I say that word gravitational, what do you hear? I hear the word gravity. So gravity is a big part of this potential energy. This is the energy stored in an object as the result of its vertical, up and down, position or its height. The energy is stored as the result of the gravitational attraction of the earth for the object. There is a direct relation between gravitational potential energy and the mass of an object. More massive objects have greater gravitational potential energy as well. There is also a direct relation between gravitational potential energy and the height of an object. The higher that an object is elevated, the greater the gravitational potential energy. And that is all we have for today. It was a quick episode, um, but I really wanted you to grasp the idea of kinetic and potential energy and how they relate to the world around us. So a fun experiment that you can do at home, it's very simple. You can just find um, a ball or a stuffed animal and you can hold it and you can see when you hold it that you have, uh, that the bear has potential energy and specifically it's gravitational potential energy. And when you let go, and the bear drops to the ground, the stuffed animal drops to the ground, then it turns into kinetic energy. So you can do this with any non-breakable item in your home and make sure you ask your parent before you drop things in your house. And on that note, I wanted to remind everyone to subscribe to the Doodling Through Education YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of the history or science facts. So remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. See you next time. Bye.